In a previous video, I promised an exploration of a dismantled and disused railway line. So I'm here at the start of that railway line today at Botley Station, and we're going to explore and see what we can find in terms of remnants of the track, or at least the route of where it went. So yeah, Botley Station, and there's the track west down towards Eastley. And you can see just down here, just past the end of the platform, a pair of tracks just curves off to the right. That's the start of what is now just a siding, but was the branch line to Bishop's Waltham. That's what we're going to be exploring today, but obviously we can't go that way. Further in the distance down there, you can see a rusty girder bridge across. We've got to get to that girder bridge to cross the track. So we can't go down this way. Also of note, this aggregate industries business here, where trucks are loading with gravel and tarmac and various other aggregate type of stuff. This used to load onto the railway. I'm not sure that it does anymore. So that's what that diagonal sort of conveyor is there because they used to load railway cars with aggregates as well to transport greater distances. Not sure if that still happens, but the remnants of the track are still a siding that's owned by this company. Anyway, enough talk. Let's go and find that bridge, which I've got to take a one kilometer detour around the road to get to. So that's the other direction of track there, going towards Portsmouth, east. But we're going to leave the station now and go along the road. From up here on the footbridge, you can get a slightly better view of that siding. So you can see the track that goes off and joins this siding here. And beyond that uh, structure at the, at the end there, the track itself curves around to the right into woodland. So coming out of the station, this is an old horse watering trough erected by the inhabitants of Curdridge, commemoration of the 60th year of the reign of Queen Victoria. So the 60th year of the reign of Queen Victoria, I don't know what that is actually, but uh, I'll figure that out, I'll put it on the screen. So a sort of commemorative water trough and this would have been for watering horses and I presume that little bit, that bit there might have been a drinking fountain for humans. There's also this which is a monument to a man Thomas Webb who was murdered by a soldier and it says the remains of the soldier are gibbeted on the adjoining common which would have been over there. Anyway, onward. So I've got to follow now the road around to the footpath that will lead me back to that bridge. So a few hundred metres down that road, towards Botley. In fact, if we went a bit further, we'd be at Botley Mill, but we're not doing that today. There's this public footpath. And this is where we're going today. Right, this is the footpath I'm going to follow to take me more or less back to where you just saw me at the station, except we're not going back to the station, we're going to that bridge. There's going to be actually quite a lot of this kind of detouring today, because you can't walk the old track, mostly. You can walk adjacent to it in a few places, you can cross it in a few places, but you can't actually walk along it. So whilst the track, when it was in operation, was three and three quarters miles long, uh, my route today, walking, is about six or seven miles because of all the detours I have to take. I'm a little, a little bit out of breath because I walked that road bit fast so I could get away from the traffic. So I'm gonna make a day of this and I brought some food with me to keep me going on the journey. I think we'll just go over to Studio Shrimp now to explain the composition of today's meals. Okay, now my journey is only going to be about six miles, probably, maybe seven, after I've done all my meandering and, and sidetracks. But I'm going to be out all day, so I thought I'd combine this video with a review of a ration pack, since that's a kind of eat outdoors type of thing. So what I've got here is a British Army ration pack. Now, I think this has been opened and then resealed, but let's see what we've got in here. 
Well, apparently this is a free sample of hot chocolate flavoured drink. So an instant hot chocolate flavoured drink. Now this is the menu five. So just get everything out of there. I bought this on eBay. I don't think that's the official bag. So I think this has been opened and reconstituted probably because I think sometimes when they sell these things off, they take various components out of them. So let's see what we've got. We've got a main course there, chicken and vegetable curry with rice, bun apple, Indonesian style spicy rice with pork, mixed beans and sweet corn, and a rice dessert. Then drink powder, lemon flavor, grapefruit flavor, drink powder with sugar and sweetness, drink powder, lime flavor, hot chocolate drink, regular flavor, a soup powder. Doesn't say what kind of soup, just soup. Processed cheese spread, hot sauce, Another hot sauce, good. Tropical fruit and nut mix, couple of wet wipes, water purification tablets, some tissue paper, 10 sheets of tissue paper, refreshing strawberry flavored fortified energy drink powder, little pack of cutlery, and then biscuits fruit. We've got four little sachets of tea and coffee whitener, two little tubes of Maxwell House Mild Blend Coffee, two peachy tips tea bags, two little sachets of white sugar, two little sachets of brown sugar, two packs of salt, two packs of pepper, five hard boiled sweets, and a Lotus Biscoff Speculoos cookie. All right, let's get this out onto a tray. Actually, I don't think there's very much point doing that because I'm not going to eat this right now. I almost forgot this, plum jam. Oh, okay. Well, that plum jam is obviously going to go with the biscuits and the cream cheese. So, good. Plenty of food here and probably more than enough to sustain me for my six or seven mile walk through the countryside exploring the train track. So let's head out now and start that off. So this footpath leads behind the industrial estate that's adjacent to the Botley Station. Now it would be nice if I could have actually kept the camera running and do this as a slow TV piece so I show you the whole of this footpath but unfortunately I've only got one spare battery for the camera and that's got to last me all day so it's going to be a little bit piecemeal this journey Now it used to be that you could actually cut through this industrial estate here and get to this footpath from there but they've put up this palisade fencing now so uh, you can't cut through the fence anymore so coming up this footpath now to that bridge that we saw in the distance from the train station and this is the aggregate industries place so here we are the bridge this is a, a girder bridge with some brickwork on top I don't think this would have ever been a road bridge. This was probably, at most, a track for horses and carts before it just became a footpath. You see they've actually cut down. There were, last time I was here, there were a load of uh, quite mature slow trees here. Starting to show its age a little bit here. Now that's the siding down there. And I can see some track workers are wandering down there to do something or other. I wonder what they're doing. So the siding itself comes off here, under the bridge, and off over there. So we've got to now see if we can trace the track through this patch of woodland here. Okay, well I don't know much about trains, but I'm assuming that's not meant to be like that. It looks like something has derailed at the end of the track there, there's a track buffer at the end. And it looks like something has derailed, so I guess that's what they're here to sort out today. It 
So I think that answers the question of whether this track is still used. It was, at least up until when that accident happened. Let's just have another look from this end. Yep. So something's gone wrong there. And... So I just want to respect the privacy of these guys. look now the track itself continues down there a bit although there obviously is a stop there for one of the lines this woodland is used for clay pigeon shooting and so well, there's an intact clay look there so there's a lot of this sort of uh, clay pigeon debris lying around in the woods. Right, we're going to find the end of this track, so I'll keep wandering this way until hopefully we get to the end and we can see what remains beyond that. And then I think we'll have some breakfast. Okay, I walked along and there is the end of the line. So that is the termination of the original track. And it's fenced all the way around. So that's the last remaining piece there of the original line, the branch line to Bishop's Waltham. This line itself was only open for about 99 years. It was opened in 1863 and finally closed in 1962. A little bit further on we're going to see the remains or possibly see the remains of a station that was at the midpoint of this line called Durley Halt. So we're just going to clamber up the embankment here, which is a bit treacherous, but I have my walking spoon to help me. Ooh. Okay. And there we go. So that's the remains of the line with the siding and the the car that's gone off the end of the line and here's the line of the old embankment still in quite good condition actually and reasonably clear a few bits of concrete here and there remains of an old railway sleeper there and it looks like yeah so you can see there's a kind of line there's a line of these concrete blocks which presumably were the old railway sleeper supports or something like that. And this little woodland pond down there. Well, this seems like not a bad place to stop and have a bite of breakfast. Yeah, there we go. So that's the remains in situ of an old railway sleeper. Rotted away now. That would have been a tar-soaked piece of pitch pine, probably. Great big piece of wood. Now, mostly gone. So, pretty much the last chance to see some of these remnants. But it is interesting to see how nature reclaims these things. So trees fall across here, and eventually this will be little more than an elongated bank of earth. I suppose people will still know it was a railway line because history doesn't completely disappear. But there it is anyway. Quite high up here, relative to the surrounding terrain. I think here there might have been a tunnel. Maybe this is maybe this is all washed out since the track was closed. I don't know if you heard that, that was a green woodpecker. The distinctive laughing call of the green woodpecker. Time for a spot of breakfast. Breakfast today primarily comprises my apple bun and 
hot chocolate. Brought my little tin cup so I can boil water directly on the stove. Well, that didn't take long at all for that water to come to nearly a boil. So, this cocoa-based beverage powder. A piece of woodland has landed in my drink. Okay. I've got a feeling this is probably enough powder for a larger cup than this, but it'll be nice if I make it stronger. I'm taking all of my rubbish home with me today, of course. So, just going to park myself down here and enjoy my apple bun. Okay. So, apple bun. Mm. Slightly stodgy, cakey pastry with a layer of cinnamon flavoured something in the middle there. And those, I presume, are pieces of spiced apple. Together with hot chocolate, which might be a little bit too hot. Oh yeah, that's nice. I've made that way too strong. I think that would probably make twice as much hot chocolate as that, but it's very nice. But goes well with this because the bun is a little bit undersweet, if anything. Okay, well that's a good start, breakfast. I'm going to stuff some of those snacks, I think the nuts and the boiled sweets in my pocket. And I'm going to wander down this track after breakfast and see exactly how far we can go. I don't expect we can follow this all the way to the road. In fact, I think we'll probably get to a private residence and I'll have to turn around. Anyway, that's breakfast. I'll see you in a moment. screw from a railway tie. Imagine most of the metal, there's another one there, looks like that's a pin of some sort there. Perhaps a round-headed one, doesn't look like that was a screw, maybe a, a pin. I imagine most of the metal, along with the track, would have been salvaged and reused or sold as scrap. Lovely example of nature doing its thing there, primroses. Beautiful spring woodland flower. Okay, I think we are approaching the bit now where we can go no further. Yep, so we're actually not very far from where this would cross the road but completely overgrown now, I can't go any further. So we'll go back along here and then cut off, get, a, get to a footpath so we can rejoin the next bit of track. The bluebells are just starting to show now. A week or two and this will be a mass of blue flowers. Anyway, back along the track. Okay, back at the spot where I had breakfast. Just check I have left it as I found it. Yeah, happy with that. Yeah, this bit here, I don't know whether this would have been a natural cutting, maybe there was a bridge here. It doesn't look like it, it looks like this is just washed out over time. That's the remains of an old badger set there. So something's lived in this at some point. So well, maybe, or well, maybe what's happened here actually is there's been badger sets in the side of this and when they've collapsed it's caused the track to wash away. How about that? But that's definitely, that's definitely there, the remains of an old badger set. I can't see any evidence of newer ones though, so it looks like the badgers are not in this area anymore. And here we are back at the end of the siding, so back into the woods and I've got to find a footpath that's up that way somewhere. This palisade fencing here at the end of the siding, and indeed this wire fencing here, quite new, I'd say that's only a few years old. 
So presumably there was something else here before that might have been in disrepair since the 1960s when this was closed off and I guess that's just been recently replaced. So that's the end of the actual line up there. So I am not a railway expert but that is what I would call a bit of a mishap. Looks like maybe the embankment has actually just suffered a bit of collapse there and this thing hasn't run off the end of the track it's just the track has kind of given way underneath it. So now we have to leave the track behind down there and walk across a bit of farmland up here. And this is going to be one of these times when we're wandering quite a way away from the track. So we walked somewhere down there nearly to the where that farm is but now I've got to walk up around a footpath around this field. Now you may recognise this field. Last time I was here there were cows in the field and it was on one of my budget challenge videos. And people suggested I should have foraged the cows. That's not foraging, that's called rustling. Right, I'm going to slow down a little bit because I'm conscious that I'm marching. I have got all day to do this and actually I should take my time and get my breath. So from up here at the corner of that field, there's very, very little sign of the track. It runs in that strip of woodland there. And that's where I walked along just a moment ago. You can see a line of poplar trees there in the distance. That line of poplar trees does follow the line of the original track. So that's our next stop. But again, we've got to go quite a way out of our way to get there. We're coming up now to Wangfield Lane. I'm not kidding, it's called Wangfield Lane. And we've got some choices here. I could cross straight over through this gate over here and go onward to Frog Mill and from there on to Durley Halt Station. But there's a piece of architecture, well, what's left of it, that I want to show you that's down this road here. So we're going to take a, another detour to get back to the track. The map that I've been displaying my movements on today is the last published Ordnance Survey map that contained the intact branch line to Bishop's Walsham. Published, I think, just before the line was decommissioned and dismantled. I'm using this map under licence, by the way, from the National Library of Scotland, which is the copyright holder. Anyway, we're walking along Wangfield Lane to Wangfield Lane Bridge. These tall trees here, tall straight trees, that's the line of poplars I pointed at from up the field. And we're now at Wangfield Lane Bridge. Uh, what bridge, you might say? Well, a couple of years ago, an overheight truck went through here and damaged the bridge, and it was demolished. After that, they didn't bother repairing it. It's not a functioning bridge anymore. So it was demolished, and they've just made good the footings of the bridge. Morning. But you can still see the remains of the railway embankment up there, which is almost where I walked to, probably about 100 metres further along that direction. And of course the remnants of the embankment up here as well. There would have been an iron girder bridge here, similar to the one I crossed earlier on foot, but of course this would have carried the train across. Now there's nothing to stop me clambering up here and having a look and see what we can see in terms of the remnants of the embankment. So, let's have a look. There's not much to see that way because somebody's built a shed on it, but the line would have continued in that direction. Here, well you can see, there's a line there. There's a cat there hunting mice. But you can see there's a line through there, which would have been the old track line. And this line of poplar trees, this double line of poplar trees, 
probably marks the edges of the track, although these trees are younger or more recently planted than when the track was closed, I would say. Just judging by their size, they're not that big for poplar trees. Right. So from up here, well, that's the remnants of the bridge. Really, all you can see is the footings of it. So I'm going to head down that way, and we've got a vantage point from the fields over there where we might be able to see the line of the track a little bit. So that's where the bridge was. What I'll try to do, I think, if I can find a public domain picture of the bridge as it stood, but just before it was demolished, I'll show you a picture of that now. And as we leave the railway track there and the bridge, we're crossing now the River Hamble here. And today's journey really is as much the story of the River Hamble and the mills on the River Hamble as it is about the railway track, because actually the railway track follows the line of the river very closely. I'll show you that on the map. And that's because part of the reason this railway track existed was to transport milled flour from the mills that were on this river. So we're leaving now Wangfield Lane and wandering up Netherill Lane. So leaving Netherhill Lane now to go across the fields towards Durley Mill and what used to be Durley Halt Station. If it can truly be called a station, it was little more than a platform and a shed, but it served the purpose of a station. I can hear a chiff chaff up in the trees up there. Okay, well, we're now coming to an open spot where we can see the River Hamble down there. And, well again, you have to use your imagination, but you can see a, green, you can see a line where the field ends at the top there. You can see that line of poplar trees continuing along there. And you can see a straight line at the top edge of that green field there. And that would have been the grade for the railway track. It ran right through there. We'll see a little bit more of that in a moment because we've got to head across the field here, through the woods and down to Durley Mill. So you might recognize that pasture that we just walked across as the place where I got the dandelions for my dandelion mead. And you might recognize this next bit as the location for my Bluebell Wood Slow TV episode. This is a route I walk quite a bit and it's very familiar to me. So we're just going to head through here. It's a little bit too early to enjoy the bluebells at full flower, but you can see them starting to come down there. I think I'm just going to stop here and enjoy looking at these spring flowers. So we've got wood anemones, we've got bluebells, celandines, the old dandelion here and there I've seen as well. And the wood anemone is really showing off their name there. Anemone means windflower in botanical Latin or Greek or whatever you call it. And it's a very apt name. The slightest little breeze makes the flowers tremble. Well, now seems as good a time as any to crack open the snacks. So I've got tropical fruit and nut mix. Just going to have a little handful of that to keep me going. So banana chips, raisins, peanuts, they don't look like roasted peanuts, dried papaya, coconut, possibly pineapple, yeah, hmm, okay. There was a slightly stale taste to that, they were in date. Probably the peanuts. Mm. Well, that'll keep me going. Onward. Coming down now, out of those woods, to Mill Lane. And it's called Mill Lane because it's the location of Durley Mill. And Durley Mill is that white building over there. Now a residential home, so I won't snoop too much. But. Durley Mill is the reason why Durley Halt Station was here. Well, 
Well, we're going to go and have a look and see if we can rejoin the track and see what remnants there are of the station. So this little stream here, well, you can see actually we'll cross in a minute. Got to be careful, these bridges are in poor repair. So that's the old mill race there. And the water wheel would have been in there somewhere. And the river itself is down here. Loads and loads of wild garlic here because this is a very damp and shady place. And we're back to the River Hamble again. And no doubt this is going to be one of these points where people say, that's not a river. Guys, it's not a competition. So, crossing the River Hamble, and we're going to head up to Durley Halt Station and where the track was. Oh, see what I mean about the uh, bridges not being in great repair. This track, I think I might have mentioned this in a previous video, this used to be a footpath, and before that it was a horse and cart track. Uh, last year, I think it was last year, we had some very, very heavy rains, and it washed out, and it's now quite difficult to traverse. But this would have been the track between Durley Mill, down there, and the station, and the station was there to serve the mill. So Durley Halt was just up there, but first I'm just going to head this way a little bit, along, back along the track, to a pedestrian level crossing that I think was the property of Frogmill Farm. So this is the location that kicked this whole video off. This is the conspicuous remains of a railway track. Let's just have a look. So we're near Frogmill Farm, that's Frogmill over there, and you can see well, you can see we're kind of looking down an avenue of trees here because that avenue, that line there, is where the track used to run. So straight down through here, we're looking at the opposite end of that grade when I climbed up the bridge. Quite a distance away, but that's what we're looking at down here. So I don't know if you can see that as well as I can, but we're looking down a clear avenue of trees, slight bank on the left of it, and a very level sort of bit of ground here and that's because that's where the railway track ran. Other evidence of the railway track. So here we've got a post that's made of what I believe is called bullnose rail and another one here this is a gate post and this would have been the gate from the level crossing. A little bit of chain there for presumably locking it up. There's the clasp for the gate and here's the hinge for the gate the other side. So the old wooden hinge timbers from the remnants of the gate there. Last little remaining piece of what would have been a pedestrian level crossing here. So there would have been a gate here for pedestrians to cross the railway. I think it was actually staffed until just before the railway closed. Here also is a slightly more modern piece of fencing from the perimeter fence of the railway. You can see these concrete posts here and further along there these are the old railway fence posts, and you'll see a line of them on the other side as well. So you can see just one, those two trees there, a couple of posts either side of that, and more posts going down. So, yeah, that's all that's left of what would have been a gate. You can see the uh, mortises from the old joints of the wood there. Right, let's just have a look at the other side. So the track came through there and would have run down that way. It's too overgrown to see the track line here, but we will pick it up again in a minute. Another piece of that old rail there. I think this is what they call bullnose rail, and I think they used to use this as, they used to use scrap pieces of this for signal posts and various signage and so on on the railway. And then the other side, well, a bit more surviving gate here, so you can just about see. So there's a hinge over there and a post here. So this would have been the way through rather than this path. So this gate would have opened, you'd have looked both ways carefully and crossed over to there. Right, we're gonna just head down the track now. Just up here, I think you can probably get a better view of 
the remaining track grade there. So another one of these old railway fence posts there and a couple more there. They have a distinctive look about them. Very kind of utilitarian, presumably quite cheap to manufacture. So through here, well, you can see there's a kind of linear feature here that comes all the way through and goes through there. And that would have been a cutting for the old track. So we're going to head down here and have a look and see what we can find of Durley Halt. That's an edible plant there, that's called Bittercress. I've eaten that one before in my sandwiches, quite nice, just tastes like mustard or cress. So we're coming up now to where Durley Halt station would have been. And this station was only here for a couple of decades or so. 1909 it opened, I think 1933 it closed. All of this happened before I was born. So most of the information I'm sharing with you today comes from various websites, which I will link in the video description. And I'm purposely not repeating every single little nugget of information from those websites because that would give you no reason to go and visit them and read the interesting information they've got there. So a couple more bits of the old, it says something on there. I can't read it. Let me know if you can figure out what that says. And this again, would have been a pedestrian level crossing for the mill. So this would have been where the horse and cart track crossed the railway track. And you can still see remnants of a gate there, in fact, you can still see remnants of white paint on there. That's the old gate rotting away there in the hedge. Probably the last chance really to see this. This is going to be completely gone in a year or two. Another piece of that metal rail stuff there. But anyway, you want to try and see what's left of the station. And there's not much, I've got to tell you. So the track came in over there. The platform, well, it's in there somewhere. And, but all that remains now is just a kind of earth embankment and a concrete slab which used to have a shed on it which was this kind of shelter for passengers so the the station's been completely reclaimed by nature unfortunately there's really not much i can show you but if you go and visit that website that's linked in the video description they've got photographs of it when it was open and so that's quite interesting to see anyway more bits of fence there and again, this would have been the other side of the gate. This would have been the other gate for the level crossing that crossed the track here. Sadly, very little of it left now. But here's a piece, here's, when we cross here, look, there's a piece of aggregate. Some of these stones here are definitely not native. These are pieces of railway aggregate from where the track was. That's definitely not a native stone for this area. So that's where the track would have gone through. Let me just see if we can get any kind of a view of something left of the station. I'm glad I brought my walking spoon because it helps getting through these brambles. So, well, yeah. So this kind of just underneath where this tree comes across here, you can see there's an earth bank. That's the remains of the platform. They took the slabs off the top of it and the facing off of it, and so all that's really left now is a pile of cinders and earth, which is where the station used to be. And through there, I'm not sure whether you can see it, I can just see, I think, the edge of a piece of concrete, which would have been the slab that had the shed on it. So that's Durley Halt, and unfortunately, not a lot left of it and less and less as the years go on as i say this gate here which was once a white painted wooden gate is nearly completely gone now such is the nature of time moving on when humans don't maintain things it's not sad i don't suppose it's this is just nature doing its thing Right, I'm going to head back down that track to Durley Mill now. 
So when Durley Mill was in operation, this would have been a horse and cart track to transport milled flour and meal from the mill up to the trains here. And I suppose also for the mill workers to get to work if they came by train, if they didn't actually just live completely locally. But this track, when this track was downgraded to a pedestrian footpath when the mill and the station closed and it's now, well it's now almost downgraded to a little stream because it's washed out completely and it's actually quite dangerous to walk down here. There is an interesting little feature down here because the bridge that I crossed earlier and had a couple of missing timbers is not the original location of the bridge to cross that bit of river there. We'll have a look at that when we get to it. So that's the that's the relatively modern bridge there, footbridge. But just up here you can see that's the original bridge there. And that would have gone off the end of that track, straight down and through past Durley Mill. That's Durley Mill there. So yep, really old bridge there, no doubt completely unsafe to walk across now. And it won't be very many years, I imagine, until that fails and falls into the river, or is, or has to be removed, or maintained maybe. Who knows, maybe somebody will restore it. Uh, well, I think, given that these timbers are rotting, I will walk near the edge because that's less likely to stress them. So there we go, there's a view of that bridge. Anyway, onward past Gurley Mill. Quite a long walk now, away from the line of the river and the track but that's really the only pedestrian footpath I can find that takes us back to where we need to go. Just to get the blood sugar levels up now, I'm gonna try one of these boiled sweets. Could be strawberry flavor, could be cherry, could be raspberry. So yeah, it's just a hard sugar candy. Mm. Yes, could be one of those things. Just tastes of fruit flavour. A little way further up the lane, I think that's probably the back end of the mill pond there. So the end of Mill Lane and we're now going on to Mincingfield Lane which down here turns into Calcott Lane. You can see there's a restricted height sign there because that's warning us about the railway bridge that's coming up. So again we're crossing the Hamble here and you'll notice this river is a lot slower and broader than it was just a bit further downstream which is interesting isn't it because and i think this is because it diverts into the mill pond so essentially this is the head of water for the mill right and just up here is the bridge and this bridge is very similar in design and structure to the one that's missing now from Wangfield Lane. So the railway would have come across here, over that bridge, and off that way somewhere. And it would have been nice to have climbed up there and had a look, but there's private signs all over the place, they obviously mean that. So, yep, the track would have come across here. You can see the remains of the embankment. Somebody's cut through it there, presumably just to rejoin two bits of land. But there's the remains of the embankment going along that way. And off towards Bishop's Waltham. We now have to walk quite a long way away from the track again, up to the end of Calcott Lane here, to Codridge Pond. Calcott Lane is a deep cutting through the countryside and again probably once was just a horse and cart track but it has these deep banks which are very characteristic of an old road so 
Again, we've got lovely primroses, violets down there. Beautiful anemones, celandines, all the lovely spring flowers right there in the bank. Isn't that beautiful? Now, just going to back up a little bit here because remember I mentioned earlier badger sets and that they didn't look very active. Well, that's what they look like when they are active. That's what I would say is a fairly active colony of badgers here. That looks from fairly recently dug out. And that's where the badger lives. Wouldn't it be funny if he stuck his head out right now? Wouldn't that be cool? Very unlikely with the sound of me wittering on. We're not going to see the badger. They tend to come out in the evening and during the night time. So we're not going to see the badger. We'd have to camp out here. But then there's a bank up here, so maybe I'll do that sometime. Sit very quietly up on that bank. Night vision camera. See if we can see a badger come out. There's something for a future video, perhaps. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comments. And we're coming up on Curdridge Pond now. End of Calcott Lane. In a moment, I have to walk along this main road. I'm not looking forward to that. So I think we'll stop here. It looks like a lovely spot. Too early for lunch, but not too early for 11s is. So I'm going to put two sachets of this coffee, that's all of my coffee, into this water because I suspect it will be a bit on the weak side anyway. Now, I don't usually have sugar in my coffee but I feel like I need the energy for it today so we'll have one serving of brown sugar. And this whitener as well. Ah, hot. Yeah, um, not the greatest coffee. Kind of very conspicuous caramel overtones to it. But it'll do. And I've also got my Lotus Biscoff. Before we head off, I think I'll make up this lemon drink, which we make up in the sachet. I'm, add, I'm to add 500 ml of cold water to this in the sachet. It's got a little Ziploc seal there, so just pull off the top part. The powder is already in there. It's lemon flavour, even though the ingredients actually have the ingredients for strawberry and orange and everything as well. Yeah, it smells like lemon sherbet. I don't have any way to measure 500 ml of water, but this is a two litre bottle, so it's about a quarter of this bottle. So, just going to kind of eyeball it. And I reckon that's probably about a quarter of the bottle. And then, I presume we just zip it up, make sure it's thoroughly sealed, which is not easy. Yep, yep, not easy. Let's try that. I think that's sealed up. Going to sacrifice a bit of my water to wash that off the bench here because that's all sugary. I'll go sticky for somebody else sitting on there if I leave it. Okay, well that's to keep me hydrated while I'm on the main road here, which is going to be a bit treacherous and there won't be very much footage of that. But we'll show you. I'll show you the start and the finish. Let's just have a little taste of this first. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to drink it straight out of the packet, which is probably a disaster. I may end up with this all over my shirt. I presume the thing to do would be to put a straw in there. Yep, that tastes like lemon and sugar. So I don't know if you can see over there, ducks and tiny, tiny little ducklings that have just come out on the bank. I reckon those ducklings have probably only just hatched in the last day or two. Okay, well wish me luck. I must now traverse this main road. I've got to walk about a half a mile or something along this way and there is no footpath here. So I'm just going to have to get on the other side of the road. It's 
So yeah, there is no pedestrian footpath here, which is unfortunate. The best I can do is walk facing traffic so I can see the cars coming. And hopefully they can see me. I already had one near miss with a car. It didn't make any effort to go around me at all. And this is why, in case you were wondering, I don't have Doggo with me today. Well, this is one of the reasons. Walking along here not be, would not be great for her, but also there's a fair bit of sitting still and standing still today. And she doesn't really like that. So in case you're wondering what happened to the railway track, this was supposed to be a video about the railway track, wasn't it? There's a valley down here, and that valley contains the River Hamble, but it also contains the route of the old railway track. So it's down there somewhere. Now this is one of these situations where there's no right answer. So I'm on the right side of the road because I'm facing traffic, but on a curve like this, it might be a better idea to cross and face the other way, just because I, could, I have more of a view of the road. But... There's no gap over there either. It's a very narrow road, really. Considering the weight and speed of traffic, it's actually quite a narrow road. So, all I'm doing is just keeping my wits about me. If I hear a car coming, I'm ducking into the hedge. Right, not a moment too soon by my reckoning. That signpost over there is our footpath to take us away from this busy main road. So this is it, this is a footpath apparently. So interesting little style here across a metal gate. And there we go, there's a pedestrian tunnel under the old railway embankment. I think this is probably a good place to stop for lunch. I'm going to clamber up onto this embankment, if I can, and see if we can walk along the track. I don't think I'm actually meant to do this, but don't tell me that. Okay. So here's what we got up here. Uh, well, there's a fence in the way. However, I don't see a fence from the other side. So, what I'm going to do... Oh, a big hornet there. Did you see that? I think we'd probably sit up on that wall there to have a bit of lunch. So, back down here. If I can, without falling over. Yeah. <coughs> Mouthful of tree. Look at the wild garlic there, ramsons. I can smell it. Through the pedestrian archway. I say pedestrian archway, but probably when the, this was a working railway line, this may well have been provided so that a farmer could get his cattle through to these fields here. The lunch is to be Chicken and vegetable curry with rice, which is in a retort pouch, which is designed to be heated by one of those flameless ration heaters. I don't have one of those and it wasn't included in this kit. So I'm gonna heat this in my can, but first a cup of tea, I think. While we're waiting for that water, I don't suppose there's any reason why we couldn't open this curry and have a look and see what that looks like. I can put the lid on to keep bugs out. So inside here, well, it's a kind of amorphous block of curry and rice. It doesn't look great, I've got to say, but it smells really good. I'll just make sure I've got all of that out of there. And you can, of course, eat this directly out of the pouch. It, all of these things are designed to be either eaten hot or cold. So this could, you know, if heating facilities don't exist, if circumstances required it, this could be eaten directly out of the pouch cold. I think that's all I'm going to get out of there. But judging from the little bits I'm just licking off my hands, it tastes pretty good. I think that's going to need a touch of water just to stop it from burning on the bottom of the pan. I'm going to get the lid on, keep the bugs out. Right, water is coming to the boil, so that can come off. And my curry can go straight on. Right. Yep, curry's bubbling away there. Tea's done. 
not the most beautiful cup of tea. All of my waste is going home with me today. There is a lot of plastic in this packaging, gotta say. And so, whoop, that's, that's done. There's a lot of packaging in this. Um, I guess that's inevitable because of what it is, the nature of what it is. But, yeah, there's a lot of plastic waste arising from this, which is not recyclable. So that's chicken curry with rice. Tasting time. It's a nice flavorful curry. There's almost no perceptible heat there. Mm. It's nicely spiced. Now we do have hot sauce. I think before I go and douse a whole bunch of this on the curry, let's taste a bit of it on its own. So that looks like it's maybe Tabasco sauce. Quite vinegary. Yeah, that's Tabasco sauce. So we'll have a bit of that in there. Spice that up. Actually, let's put the lot in there. Whatever. Mainly because I don't want to carry a half full packet of hot sauce home with me and have that spill in my bag. Let's see if that gives it the required spicing up. Hmm, quite acidic now, but it has a bit more heat. There is also this, which says it's tomato sauce, but it just feels incredibly watery. But I think we've got to have a look at it and see what we're dealing with here. Not sure I'm going to add this, so this is definitely a case of tasting first. Okay, well, it's not as, not as thin as I thought. That's just a rather artificial-looking ketchup. Yeah, it's just ketchup. I thought that was going to be a lot more runny than it turned out to be, but it's got a fair bit of sweetness, which hopefully will just counteract some of the acidity of that Tabasco. Mm. Yeah, it's all right. I think I've messed around with that enough now. I'm just going to eat it. Well, that was okay. I've got to conserve water because I'm down to about uh, half a litre now. But I do need to rinse that out. Okay, time for pudding now, or dessert if you prefer. We've got biscuits, fruit, processed cheese spread, and plum jam. Kind of got smashed up a bit in the post. Kind of like a fruit shortbread. Not especially sweet, but that's not a bad thing. And now processed cheese. Oh boy. Well, I thought that was going to be a bit more spread than cheese, but it's... <laughs> it's just a blob of... Doesn't smell of anything. I'll taste it like that. Mm. Very mild, barely cheesy, quite salty. It does bring out the fruity flavour of those fruit biscuits though. And with a bit of plum jam on top, we've kind of got a cheesecake thing going on here. Right, well that was lunch, and those biscuits did need something to make them a little bit more palatable. That cheese spread was, it was a bit like Dairy Lee Triangles, but it was okay. But the combination of fruit biscuits, cheese and jam, actually really quite nice. I imagine that's what I'm supposed to do with it. The remaining little bits of biscuit there, I think I'll just smash up and mix them in with my tropical fruit and nut mix. So before I set out again on that footpath to get to Bishop's Waltham, I think we'll just have a little wander along the railway line this way. Can't go that way, there's a fence, there's obviously all sorts of overgrowth. This, this track does go up to a point where it runs then parallel and quite close to the road. So it's probably going to be neither scenic nor tranquil. So I don't expect we're going to walk very far along here. I can see a trail though, so people do walk this. So yeah, as I thought, this is the bit where we're running quite close to the road now. And I think we're going to find that this gets more and more overgrown. And less and less like a path. Let's have a look. Well, I think maybe we could, we could go further down there. 
but it's going to be more of the same. And just look at all of that wild garlic. I suppose I could have added a bit of that to my curry to give it a little bit of extra zing, but I'm not planning to do any foraging today unless I find something really special. Oh, right, this is interesting. Well, a little bit interesting. Just an old bit of ironwork there. I don't know what that is. Probably part of an old piece of trash or something. Just a chunk of iron. Some relic of the railway, no doubt. I'll back as I found it. So back to the spot where I had lunch and just double check. Left it exactly as I found it, that's good. And that's the footpath down there. So there's a little footbridge over there we have to cross. And then I think the track goes along the side of the river, just the other side. Let's find out. So again, we're crossing the River Hamble here. And I'm calling it the River Hamble, even though it may appear to many of you who live near bigger rivers as just a stream. But it's called the River Hamble because, well, if you've seen it in other videos, it's the same body of water that opens into Southampton water. And it's called the River Hamble for its entire length. Kind of makes sense. Okay, well, footpath goes right here. There is actually a footpath that goes up the hill there. I think that's the bit that's closed and possibly because fallen trees and things from the recent storm. So now we just got a lovely stroll alongside the river here. I can still hear the traffic in the distance. Oh here's a thing. Look this is called cuckoo flower and this is a plant I foraged before. It's a relative of mustard and cress, cabbage family and it has a kind of watercress flavour. And isn't that a beautifully healthy looking little river there? Or brook if you prefer. Emerald green weed. I'm really surprised there isn't a trout somewhere in this picture. Might have seen me coming a way off. Now we are still walking the line of the railway. I don't know if you can see it up there through the trees. There's a kind of horizontal line of green vegetation, which is where we were walking just a moment ago. So the old railway line goes along that line there. And it actually disappears completely when it goes into this industrial area here. There's no traces of the line at all. Once you get to this point, it just disappears completely. I think it's been completely uh, re-landscaped and everything. So what this industrial area actually is, is a water treatment plant or sewage works. So it's a testament really, I suppose, to the effectiveness of what they're doing there, that the river downstream there that we just looked at is actually so clear and, and pleasant because they will be discharging water into this water course here, but treating it first. And so, yeah. But a style like this is a fairly sure bet that I'm still on the right footpath because this is designed for people to climb over. I see a footpath sign over there. It's pointing up that way. So footpath continues up there. We're going further away now from the old railway track, except there isn't any railway track to see, so we're not missing much. Now it looks like we head back out across the fields. I think I might stop and finish off that lemon drink. another style. I'm probably not going to record any more footage now until I get... Oh, actually it's not a style, it's a kissing gate. I'm not going to record very much more footage now unless there's something interesting to show you because I've got to conserve batteries until we get to the Bishop's Waltham Railway Trail. So in a moment we'll be coming up to the end of the Bishop's Waltham Trail and this farm track is not part of the railway track except the aggregate here looks like it might have been reclaimed from the railway embankment. Not sure if that's true or if they just brought in aggregate that happens to look similar, but this could be the remains of the demolished embankment that's been taken away where those sewage works were.
we're about to join the end of the Bishop's Waltham railway line trail which is along here so in theory the railway track went this way and I don't know is there any trace that there was a railway track here or across that field very very little if any now I think it's just been completely removed from the landscape But never mind. So we are now joining the Bishop's Walton Railway Trail. And this is the remnant of where the track would have been. At least I think we join onto it in a moment. Yes, so we're already on the railway embankment here. You can see there's quite a steep bank down there. And also to the other side, very characteristic of a railway embankment. This gravel here is mostly modern aggregate that's been added to the path, but here and there there are little pieces of the grey railway aggregate which would have been original. And you might see them more at the sides here, so there we go, there's a piece of the original railway aggregate right there. Another chunk right there, that's definitely not native stone. So we're just going to wander along here. There might be some features here that remain from the railway. If there are, I'll stop and turn the camera on. So here's a spot where we can see that's the modern gravel that's been added to make this into a footpath. But this is the old aggregate and cinders from the original railway embankment. And I think it does look quite similar to that aggregate we saw on the farm track. So maybe some of that has been used when they cleared it across that field we looked across. Now this is interesting because there's an apple tree growing here by the side of the railway track. So that's apple blossom there. Not a very old tree, I would say. So it's quite common to actually find fruit trees alongside railway tracks because in the Victorian era and beyond, instead of the buffet car or the buffet trolley on a train or vending machines in stations people ca people carried and ate pieces of fruit and threw the cores and pips out of the window of the train and they used to grow on the side of the track so it's possible that this apple tree here it's definitely not a first generation descendant but it might be a, like a second generation descendant of an apple tree that grew here after an apple core was thrown from the window of a train those houses beyond here are very new, so it's not come from there. But yeah, alongside railway tracks, you very often find plum trees and pear trees and feral apple trees, and they're all not wild. They're feral, where they've grown from seeds and pips that were discarded by passengers back in the day, before railway stations had vending machines in them. So now instead of being on an embankment, we're in a cutting because railway tracks are generally as level as possible. And so we've gone from a bit of a low lying area into the side of a hill and we're now in a railway cutting, a small one. A oh, little pair of blue tits on the tree there. Are they blue tits or coal tits? Coal tits, I think, maybe. Yes. And just over there, to the right of the track, there's Abbey Mill. And again, this is a mill that was on the River Hamble. If we get a chance, we're going to have a look at that if I've still got some batteries left. But again, a mill adjacent to a railway track. And that's not a coincidence. So now we're coming up to the end of the Bishop's Waltham branch line. And if we'd been on a train, uh, I don't know, a uh, hundred years ago, <laughs> we'd have been approaching the station at this point. But now we're approaching uh, a main road and a roundabout. But we'll have a look anyway. We'll see, I don't think we can find any traces of the station. I think it's all completely gone. But we'll have a look anyway, see what we can find. These gates, although they are styled as railway gates, are quite modern and were added after the 
line was converted to a footpath. So these are a kind of a modern affectation to evoke the heritage of this site. But yeah, these are not original. They're just something that's been constructed to have a bit of a kind of railway feel to it. So where this roundabout was, would have been the start of Bishop's Waltham Railway Station. I think the other side of it, we may be able to see some faint traces of the track. Let's go and have a look. So we're now walking down what would have been either the platform or the railway track. This road wasn't here when the line was, or when the station was open. This, is, uh, this road was built after, it was, after the track was decommissioned and demolished. So this would have been the platform or the track or something somewhere around here there's no remaining traces of it at all i was hoping that maybe we might find a little bit of gravel or something a little bit of steel work perhaps something as a reminder that this was once a railway track but i suspect that was cleared away very thoroughly before this road was built This here would have been the mill pond for Abbey Mill. Let's go and have a look at the mill itself. Sadly, a little bit neglected and somewhat derelict. Quite a shame really to see an old building like that just being left to go to ruin. Let's see if I can give you a better view of over the fence. I don't think I can reach. Okay. What a shame. And yeah, it just really deserves to be turned into something a bit more than a ruin. So I'm just about to head back and actually here's something I missed on the way out. Various bits of concrete which don't look very interesting in themselves but probably are remnants of the original track and trackside furniture and so on. That looks like it might be a cover to a little junction box or something like that. And I think I can see what is the end of a concrete sleeper down there as well. So back at home in time for dinner. And I'm going to just cook this outside in the garden because why not? So for dinner we've got Indonesian style spicy rice with pork. And mixed beans and sweet corn. But first, some soup. Soup powder. It doesn't even say what kind of soup powder it is. It's just soup powder. It looks like vegetable and mushroom. Now coming home for dinner obviously wasn't my complete original plan. I wasn't sure how long this walk was going to take me, depending on how much there was to look at. Today we might have been out for longer, but just the way it worked out. But this has afforded me the opportunity to wash out my uh, mess tin and to wash out my mug. So I'm going to have soup that hopefully doesn't taste of hot chocolate and tea and coffee. And I suppose while that's happening, I'll get this spicy rice with pork into the mess tin. So I suppose I could boil these in the bag, except they wouldn't fit in there. So, and on my walk today, I didn't take enough water to be able to do that. I could have used water from the river, I suppose. So that's the spicy rice with pork. Kind of looks a bit like lunch did. And this is mixed beans with sweet corn, which I'm not really sure is meant to be mixed with this. Probably this would be eaten separately if it was heated in a, one of these flameless ration heaters. But I think I'm just going to tip this all in together and heat it up together. It's kind of like somewhere between baked beans and a bean salad. Well, not a huge portion size there, but I suppose that was a side. And I think somewhere in the bag of things I haven't yet used, we've got fruit flavored drink powder. And we've got lime flavoured drink powder. And we've got grapefruit flavoured drink powder. And another hot chocolate and a bunch of other things as well. So plenty of things I haven't used today. But I might as well do this fruit flavoured drink powder. So we've got to put this with 500ml of water, is it? 
Yeah, mix with 500 ml of cold water. Now, I assume I could just do this in the pouch that the lemon flavored drink came in. So I'm assuming that's why they gave me one drink pouch and several sachets of drink. So this is a kind of sugary energy drink that's designed to keep people going. Obviously, people probably expending a bit more energy than I've been doing today. So, this is the guava flavored drink powder. I'm just gonna put it in 500 ml of water here. So the plastic cutlery is, yeah, cheap catering style plastic cutlery. Very much single use. And this is the vegetable and mushroom soup. Probably better if you add the water to the powder rather than the other way around, but I'm sure that will mix in in a moment. Okay, well, all of my clumps of powder in the soup have gone, and those pieces left there are now bits of mushroom. It smells all right. It smells very savoury. I'm going to add a bit of salt to my soup boost the seasoning. Let me just check what's going on here. I thought so. I think I'll have this pepper in my soup as well because why not? With a bit of extra seasoning, what's it like? Better. Yeah. I think I probably just added a bit too much water there. Guava drink is dissolved now. What a very lurid colour that is. Interesting that they chose to put colour in here at all, because this would probably have been consumed straight from one of those pouches. Again, really, really sweet. Very faint, fruity flavour, I suppose. It's all right. I imagine the key benefit there is the energy you need. Let's just make sure that's hot. So, Indonesian-style spicy rice with the beans and sweet corn mixed in tasting time. Yeah, it's right. Predominant flavour there is cumin. But yeah, it's nice enough. I wouldn't say it's all that spicy. We have got another sachet of hot sauce, but it was quite vinegary, so I think I'm not going to add it to that. This is a piece of pork, I think. Very tender. Nice. It could do with some crackers or something to go with it. Really, some, uh, it's got rice in there, but it could do with something dry to crumble in there. So reflecting on that railway walk today, quite a lot of the track and the traces, especially of Durley Halt Station, are just gone. And the bits that are still there are going fast. So even things like those gates, just disappearing fast, rotting away, turning into soil, disappearing into nature. I mean, I'm not sure that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just nature doing its thing. Our instinct is to try to preserve these things. But, you know, yeah, it's not necessarily a bad thing that nature is just taking back those pieces of track which used to be... I mean, after all, they were nature before we built the railway there and they're turning back into natural environments again after we've finished. So not inherently a bad thing that it's just all crumbling away and disappearing. It's good that it's been recorded before that happens. Don't forget to visit that website about Durley Halt Station and the links in the video description which have got a lot more information than I've covered today and some photos. Not very many photos because there just aren't very many surviving photos of that station but there's enough there to get an idea of what it was like. It is a shame that there isn't really a decent footpath route from Botley to Bishop's Waltham. I had to take my life in my hands to walk along that main road it really was a bit dicey and there isn't another route that's a substitute for that not without lots and lots of zigzagging and serious backtracking but I hope that's been interesting that was really what's left of the railway not quite as much as I hope to discover in fact today's food's been kind of okay kind of slightly mediocre food but it's filling and presumably quite nutritious I have got one more thing to eat now, which is my rice dessert, which I think is just like rice pudding. So there it is, rice pudding, creamy rice pudding. Probably would have been nice and warm, but it's all right cold. Very creamy taste. 
but quite a watery texture. So intensely sort of creamy, buttery flavour. In fact, that just looks like butter fat there. Kind of weirdly drippy, watery texture. I think it might have split, actually. I think maybe the cream has split. And so we've got kind of gloopy rice pudding and then butter fat that's just separated out. There's no off flavour or anything there, so yeah, it tastes okay. And I still have a fair bit of this ration pack left over, so there are two more drink pouches. There's hot chocolate, I think there's another tea bag, and another packet of hot sauce and ketchup, and a few other bits and pieces, sugar as well, which I'm not going to use. I get the impression that the calories I've eaten today were not consumed on that walk. This is probably designed for people doing a lot more strenuous exercise than I'm doing today, even in my little seven, eight mile walk. So there we go, that was the exploration of the Botley to Bishop's Waltham branch line, or what's left of it, or the root of it. I hope that's been interesting. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.